Hey everyone, it's Mike Shaw with Planet for Photographers and uh, today let's just imagine that you have this beautiful outdoor scene that you'd like to photograph but you want to put the full moon, let's say, or the sun at an exact location within your composition. Or maybe you want to capture the rising or the setting crescent moon at just the right spot within your scene. The thing is, you know it's possible to do this, but you really have no idea how to choose the exact date and time for this to happen. Well, this video tutorial is going to show you an amazing tool in Planet for Photographers that will allow you to do just that. What you'll see first is, to is how to specify exactly where in the sky you want to put the sun or the moon. And then secondly, how to search for future dates and times when the sun or the moon will be exactly where you want it to be. Really, the only thing missing is a link for a travel site for you to buy plane tickets. All right, so to begin with, let's open up the Sun and the Moon Finder. You can access the Sun and the Moon Finder from the ephemeris menu, like this. Alternatively, it's the fifth button from the left, like so. When you first open it, you'll see six fields along the top. The first is the target event, in this case sunrise. The next is the elevation angle range, in this case 0.0. .0. The next is the azimuth range with a default value of any, and then along the bottom you have the start date, the end date, and the number of results in the middle. So let's now go through each one of these. So to begin with, if you tap on the target, you'll see a whole list of possibilities. So in addition to sunrise and sunset, moonrise and moonset, you have all the different phases of the moon. This is great if, for example, you want to position the setting crescent moon right next to some landmark facing west, but for now we'll just go ahead and keep it here as sunrise. Now the next field is the elevation angle range, and this is simply the range of heights or angles above the horizon that you're able to accept. For example, you might choose an angular height range of between 5 and 10 degrees, but we'll go through all this in more detail shortly. And the azimuth range is a similar concept. You can enter the range of azimuth angles that would fit in with your composition, for example, between 60 to 80 degrees, let's say, which would be just north of due east. Now the start and end dates are pretty self-explanatory and simply correspond to the date range of shooting possibilities that you have in mind. In this example, let's go ahead and we'll choose date down here at the bottom after tapping on the start date. And then we'll choose January 1st, 2019 like this and then hit done. And the end dates we might choose to be a year later. That gives us uh, the full year of 2019. Now once you bring up the list, you can then tap on any of the dates to set the current time and the date to that date and target time. For example, sunrise. Notice that you can also filter by day of the week by tapping the buttons along the top of the list, for example, Friday and Saturday. And when we go back, you can see that there are 104 results that meet this criterion. So now to illustrate how to use the Sun and the Moon Finder, we're going to load the markers from the earlier New York video tutorial on markers. To do that, we tap on the menu button and select markers, and then we select New York. When asked if we want to clear all the existing markers and overwrite any duplicate markers, we don't really need to do that. So we're just going to click on Done. That brings us back to our scene in New York that shows a couple of shooting locations and one World Trade Center as our subject. We select our viewing location across the Hudson River and then choose the camera location as before. We tap on the One World Trade Center building and select the subject location like that. Now notice this orange fan. This fan corresponds to the complete range of azimuth angles for our results. Now notice that we want to have we have to have the One World Trade Center building within this fan for our shooting location to be a viable option. For example, if our shooting location was up here, then the One World Trade Center would not lie within the orange fan and there is no possibility of having the sunrise take place behind it. So we just need to choose a camera location that has the One World Trade Center lying some, somewhere within the orange fan like this. Now as a side note, remember that the terms sunrise, sunset, moonrise, and moonset all correspond to the point where the top of either the sun or the moon touches the horizon. In this example, we're actually interested here in a slightly different time. Let's say, for example, when the sun is 5 degrees above the horizon. So that's when we go up to our elevation angle range like this and enter 5.0 and then done. This has the effect of slightly changing the position of the orange fan as well. But let's go back and reset the value to zero just like this. Now we can easily check on other events, by the way, by tapping here and then choosing, for example, sunset. You now see a darker orange fan pointing in the opposite direction corresponding to the range of azimuths for sunset. Similarly, we could tap on Moonset, for example, we'd see a dark blue fan in the west corresponding to Moonset as well. But let's go back to Sunrise like this and then also bring in our viewfinder option by tapping down here and choosing this button here. 
This brings up the green fan on the map, representing the field of view of our chosen lens focal length. Now notice that the green fan and the orange fan are just totally different things. The orange fan corresponds to the range of sunrise azimuths, whereas the center of the green fan simply corresponds to the particular azimuth where we're aiming our camera, and the width of the green fan represents the field of view that corresponds to our lens focal length. So what we can do is we can tap and drag the field of view around and pointing in different directions like this, and we can tap and shrink the width of it like that. So what we're going to do here is to tap on the center of the green fan and line that up with the one World Trade Center building. So now, when we go to the virtual viewfinder view like this, we can actually see the one World Trade Center outline that we created in our earlier plan. So now let's see how we can use this virtual viewfinder view to precisely position the sun or the moon just where we want it to be. Okay, so in this first example, let's imagine we want to position the sun to sit just to the left of the building right over here someplace. So sit down, are you ready to have your mind blown? So do this. We look at the elevation angle scale on the right, and we see that this position is roughly 12 degrees, and when we look at our azimuth scale on the bottom, we see that's roughly 107 degrees. So that's what we enter in for our elevation angle range and our azimuth range along the top like this, plus or minus 3 degrees, like this, and done. Boom! Look at that. We've created a window for where we want our sun to appear. How great is that? And okay, well, since it's not exactly right, we could go back to our angles and start tweaking the values numerically. You know, maybe it's 11 degrees instead of 12 degrees. But look, there's a much easier way. First, tap on this green hand icon in the upper right corner to make it go into a white color. And then all you have to do is simply drag the corners of this window and manually position them on the screen until the window is exactly where you want that sun to appear. That's just amazing. Now to actually see where the sun's going to be on each of the results that have it fit into this window, all you need to do is go back here and simply tap on the forward or reverse yellow playback icons, and you can scroll through the different positions of the sun uh, to see the valid results. So now let's see how we can line up the sun directly over the center of the building and the antenna. First, tap on the azimuth field like this. Clear everything to zero, including the plus and the minus values, and then hit the Scene button in the lower left-hand corner. What that does is lines up the center of our target window with the center of the building. How great is that? We can drag the window into a vertical shape like this, and now when we advance through the results, we uh, start early in the year when the sun just peeks over the top of the building. We could get a nice starburst with a small aperture. And then as you can see, as we advance through the dates, the sun goes progressively higher until it reaches the top, and then it comes back down as we go through the year. Just incredible. Such a valuable tool, I still can't believe it. Well, with that, I hope you can uh, use this tool to line up your shots with the utmost pre precision. In the meantime, good luck with your planning.